Right then, um, as I record this, uh, it's Sunday and I've just finished a uh, live, an hour long, 58 keys live writing sprint session. If you're interested in that, if you'd like to know more, then follow the links in the show notes to my Patreon page. Right? But what I actually want to talk to you about is not Sunday, it's Friday. I want to talk to you about last Friday, June the 9th, 2023, for this reason. What I'd really like to do is to recommend an entire bunch of Mac and iPhone and iPad writing apps to you. But rather than it just be some random collection, let's do it this way. Here is everything I used pretty much in sequence. Not sure about that now. Last Friday. Hello, I'm William Gallagher and this is 58 Keys, which as ever, as always, is for writers like you and me, who use and who write on Macs and iPhones and iPads. Uh, do subscribe because, I mean, there's always, pretty much always, so much to talk about. This time, possibly not. Maybe there's slightly less than I originally expected. It actually seems now that this one day in the app life idea, it's become an annual thing for this well it's like this is the second one does it count as annual yet for this second ever one though i had plans for you i was going to show you action shots such as this oh yes yeah no please don't look too closely at that um it was early friday morning but overnight before i'd had some sort of allergic reaction to something still don't know what yet and my top lip ballooned out so yeah forget shooting anything uh anything in filmic pro legacy that's what i would have been using and uh using the filmic pro remote to do it so well that was two fewer apps than i expected to be using focus on the lip and the medication limb not the apps um although i couldn't film i couldn't realistically film me Using that, I still have to use all the apps that I used that day. So let me tell you that for 2022's version of this, I used 36 apps, and for this one day in 2023, I used 44. This is the list, but we're not going to go through 44 of them because I mean it's a coin toss, isn't it? Whether you'd nod off first or I would. Instead, let me focus on these four apps that were entirely new to me this year, and one that well, just it has a new name. Let's examine those. And actually, in the case of two of them, let's examine them really quickly as well. You'll see why. First up, Clean Shot X. This one's got to be quick because there is actually already a full 58 Keys edition devoted in every sense entirely to this screen grabbing tool. You know that you can take you know, a screenshot, a grab of your of whatever's on your Mac screen. You know you can do that at any time, just with any Macs. I mean, right out of the box, press the right buttons, it's done. But CleanShot X is third-party app, does it better, and it does more. One example, specifically it does this, scrolling capture. You have a long web page, it'll grab the lot. Don't know what happened to my syllables there. Do do take a look at the full video just about Clean Shot X, link in the show notes, and bear in mind that I do gush a bit in it. That was exactly two months ago, it turns out, and I use it even more now, despite having spent one of those entire months being away. Love that app so much. Uh, next, let's do the name change one, because this, this too is quick, because this too has a full, well, actually has two full previous 58 keys editions. One of them was when it was just called Hook and another later when it became Hookmark. There's a bit more than a name change here. Um, let me explain if you haven't found it anyway already. What Hookmark does is it lets you, um, link is the right word, associate everything together. The example I keep giving to people to twist their arm to get this great app is a magazine that uh, I tend to edit maybe every other quarter or so. I can be here at my Mac in Affinity Designer laying out the page and I realise that didn't the client ask me to do a particular thing about a particular thing? Set it in some email? Well, two clicks and I'm out of Affinity and in that specific email reading it. And then I'm back in the page layout app. Or now I'm in a folder that has all of the content. Or now I'm in pages writing rejection letters for all of the articles in this other folder. You do take a moment to kind of gather all these things together when you're starting off on a project and add them as you go a bit, but then you fly between them. Think, dear, 
and you're done. It actually gets so you struggle to understand why Max and PCs, I suppose, wouldn't just work this way anyway. Hookmark, another great app. Do watch the Hookmark video as well because, well, as well as because it'll tell you what it's like. It's actually an interview, that episode, with the developer. And he talks you, talks you about it and why it's done and also talks you through what it does far better than I ever would. Another entirely new one-ish. It wasn't on last year's list, but I, I have dabbled in it. I just go through stages where, where I dabble more. It's Logic Pro, an audio editor. So uh, last Friday, what happened? I started around 7 a.m. doing writing a self-destruct blog in uh, Mars Edit. That's the other app I want to point out. Making uh, making some plans then for an event later. I made that in Omni Outliner. Just talked about a lot already. Made some more notes and drafts. And so it went on. And then about t I had a tea break. And then just before 10 a.m. From 10 a.m. to about 6 p.m. I was booked writing for Apple Insider and it did end about six that came with a bunch of other apps that I needed to use and then I did one more thing which was um, I wrote the Apple Insider daily podcast it's like a five to ten minute news podcast I wrote that in Omni Outliner I then voiced it recorded it in Logic Pro edited it put it out in <laughs> welcome to the Apple Insider daily for June 9 2020 I would bet money Right, that if you haven't used Logic Pro or any other audio editor, that you would say it isn't a writing tool on the mere fact that you'd be right. It isn't. But hold that thought for a minute, would you? I do adore Logic Pro. Obviously, I love software, don't I? I'm also a bit daunted by Logic Pro. I mean, I've seen amazing work done in that app by musicians. And I have never, that, see, I will never get to that level. But every time I need to use it for a new project, I come away giddy with how great Logic Pro is. But let me be clear. In this case, talking to you now, I mean Logic Pro for the Mac. That's what I have. That's what I was using last Friday. That's what I use all the time. And until about a month ago, there wasn't any other version of it. And now there is a very significant version. Now there is Logic Pro for the iPad. And it was launched right alongside the last of my apps for the year, Final Cut Pro for iPad. And I so want to talk to you about that. Yeah, that thing I said about Logic Pro being, being and not being a writing tool, I think it is. And I think the reason for that goes at least as much for the video editor, Final Cut Pro, perhaps in my case more so. Video and audio, audio editing to me, I mean, it use, I think it uses the same mental muscles that you and I have to have with our writing. I mean, it can, all of these things, writing, editing, they can all be painstaking jobs, but much more than that, these tools are for communicating, just like writing is. You need to think about, um, well, what you're saying, what you're not saying, how you're saying it, you need, to think, you need to think about rhythm, don't you? Rhythm and pace. and Just the way you or I might spend a quite embarrassingly long time making fine, tiny adjustments to a really important sentence. Well, you do exactly that on a scene in Final Cut Pro or an audio track in Logic Pro. To me, video and audio editing are also so satisfying and actually so educational. I once shot uh, a long 58 Keys episode from a script I thought I'd honed down. But then when I came to edit the filmed version, uh, do I tell you this, do I not? Well, I have started. I was able to cut out 12 minutes, 12 minutes of me yapping on. And I've been steadily learning from this how to get a better sense of what must be said and what really doesn't have to be about about what's superfluous, I suppose. But I believed I learned that a little from Logic Pro and also, you know, BBC Radio training and stuff, but I learned it a very great deal from Final Cut Pro on the Mac. I adore, I mean, I've said I like things, I adore Final Cut Pro above much else. In fact, so much I was on holiday and I saw this headline that Final Cut Pro was finally coming to the iPad and I was wide-eyed with excitement that this was coming. I actually, I mentioned, I mentioned Patreon earlier. I went straight on my Patreon page and I asked, you know, would it be mad to do a 58 Keys writing video about a video editing app? Everyone was very nice and polite. 
After a while, I realised they probably just thought, eh, they could skip that episode if they liked. So, you know, but as it turns out, no. There won't be a 58 Keys episode to skip about Final Cut Pro on the iPad. Because after you and I talk right now, I'm cancelling my subscription to it. Actually, I'm cancelling it before the trial period ends. I, look, it's very, very good. I am so pleased that Final Cut Pro is on the iPad. And actually, I enjoyed editing a whole 58 Keys episode on it the other week, except truth is, it couldn't be a whole 58 Keys episode. I mean, without you know boring you with the details, there was just like a tiny last couple of things I could not do without coming back with it to Final Cut Pro on the Mac. So why don't I just stay on the Mac? For it? There are these, there are these tiny little things missing. And the iPad version, I mean, actually, there are some big things missing compared between the Mac and the iPad versions. You know they'll come. I'm sure they'll come. And actually, I expect that in the future, I will end up using Final Cut Pro on the iPad a lot. I mean, the ability to just pick up a pane of glass and do all of your work from writing the script to editing. I mean, it's close to irresistible now. It's going to be wholly irresistible shortly. Sure. Soon. I mean, it must be. Maybe, actually, maybe if you'd indulge me, I could do a whole 58 keys and you could skip watching it about Final Cut Pro for the Mac. Um, there are reasons to skip, actually, to be serious. There are better editors than me, obviously, but maybe you and I could work on this. I could try showing you what I think, why I think it, not a writing tool, okay, but a writer's tool. Unless, actually, that just sums it all up. Yeah, I might think on about that. Uh, Final Cut Pro, Logic Pro, I threw in Mars Edit there, Hook Mark, uh, Clean Trot X. Um, I use all of these on Friday. Um, and uh, there were these other apps, so these 40 odd other apps in total. And I, most of them you forget about because they're just there all the time. But uh, let me also say, just for completeness, I used a lot of them across a, a quite surprising 10 devices uh, or pieces of equipment. In fact, this lot here. And. Well, if you're going to do it, do something for very completeness. Last year, for some reason, and who knows why, I did also count how many mugs of tea I drank during that one day. And it was a surprising, to me, four. Only four. Whereas, for this, one day in 2023, I drank three. But look, my lip, it was out here. Seriously, very, very hard. I'll do better in June 2024. In the meantime, that's it for this edition. 58 keys um all of the links for the 40 odd apps uh, and the prices for the main ones that i've mentioned they're in the show notes where you can find them along with all sorts of other things but for now thank you very much for watching take care of yourself write more and i'll see you soon my lips all right now isn't it? almost gone